have never been separate. They only separated them here, and they always fight with each other. Why? Because if they put them together, it all makes sense. Yeah, and the prison planet wouldn't be a prison planet anymore. That's why it was done this way. Yeah, they keep saying, okay, now it's happening. Okay, now it's part of the planet, actually. To just have so many people cry wolf for the last 200 years, and nobody listens anymore when the end times do come. Yeah, exactly. One, one of the people that works there is a CIA asset. That doesn't surprise me. I wouldn't doubt several people in our workshops are too. <laughs> I think they've been following us around for a long time. But that's okay. We don't do anything harmful. You know? and I think they probably find the information interesting, so they keep coming back, whatever. <laughs> uh, who knows? It might help them. So, let's see. Where we left off. Are you off. waving? <laughs> Last graph. Okay, this so is we're, at, we're basically at December 21st, 2012, and yep. exactly what the potential is at that yep. moment. This is the alignment that everybody's been trying to figure out what it means we're aligned with galactic core. It's actually the alignment of the rods. If you don't know that spinning bodies have rods and chambers, you have no idea. Right? So you're going to try to figure out what angles are happening, what the stars are doing. It's not about that. It's about this. It's about when these, when this frequency comes in here, which, you know, it, it's stationed in there at that, you know, it's actually coming through and kind of hangs there. That's a period that, that rotates very slowly. So that is kind of a, a thing that these things pass through. But at this point right here, when we hit December um, 21st, 2012, our rods will cross into this and cross, it, it, it makes a, what's that, a right angle, I think? I don't know my angles well, is this like 90 degree? Where the solar rod made more powerful by the frequencies they're going to blast through here. Because what they're going to do different here than when this alignment usually occurs is they are opening what's called the Prosiac black hole center. And they are going to beam in frequency from the parallel side for the final kick. And that kick will send a powerful frequency burst through here, through the solar gates, that will hit our rod as it crosses over. And that will make it spin, which you spin that rod, it's going to spin the whole thing. And actually, part of it, because they're actually already on a spin in the opposite direction, part will spin one way and part will spin the other, and it would snap the crust. And it would be like, you know, within three-day roll and everything gone. And because they're only interested at this point, before there was some takeover games and let's play with it for a while and evolve with the DNA. But at this point, the, the big guys, they're only interested in the quantum of energetic food that can be drawn in. They don't even want to play with the little guys. Like, it's way beyond just the Anunnaki and the Draconians anymore. It's, you know, this is multi-matrix warfare that is happening here. And uh, we've got all sorts involved that were not even in the Voyager's books. We didn't even know about them then. They told us as on a need-to-know basis, by the way, we have Borgia now. But by the way, we have Thetans now. By the way, the Thetans are from parallel Earth. Yes, they were part human and part something else over from parallel. And they invaded here 75 million years ago as well, right? And tried to take over the planet then. So it's very interesting. And it's like everybody's represented on, on Club Universe Earth right now. All the little teachings of each little, you know, fallen group. There's a few that actually are connected with our teachings that aren't fall groups. We haven't found them yet. It would be nice, right? Yeah, it wouldn't be so lonesome because it's a bit lonesome standing out here and trying to explain this to people. But... We will get through this alignment, and we will be able to withstand that acceleration that's going to come through there. That acceleration would spin the rods, and it would also spin the rods fast enough to trigger the core to hit the 55 activation. And then once it hits 55 and does a full 55, it starts going um, where it eats, the, it eats the quantum behind it and starts expanding rapidly on the Fibonacci spiral and just literally torques where it gets, spins faster and faster and pulls the two of those together. It literally pulls them into the sun and then pulls the sun into the other thing. It takes the whole system out. It's the, the, the level of technology involved in this is just, in my mind, mind-blowing. It's looking at, oh my god, you know, what kind of consciousness are we dealing with here? You know, our scientists look like little kindergartners by comparison. Well, wow, we back engineered a spaceship. whoopie doo <laughs> That is impressive, horrific, but impressive, okay, scary. But at but this point, we have to say that, that this is not going to happen, and why? 
it's not going to happen because of what the Guardian groups are doing to intervene. If it weren't for the intervention of the Mishayahanic groups that are the ones from the Aquarian matrix that are already the Adashi adepts that have gone through the, the Christar you know, um, transfiguration, uh, there would not be enough quantum energy to hold the grid stable here to stop this for even 200 years. Um, there's two things. One of them happens this weekend that is the beginning. It has to do with what ultimately becomes in uh, 2012, progressively, what's called the mirror in the sky. We talked about the planes um, of Earth, right? We showed those maps a bit where it showed from the core going up. There are the different plane interfaces. We showed that there are aurora platforms in between there. They are progressively being activated, and another level of activation is coming through this weekend, that they will create literally a buffer field that will bounce back some of that. It will literally bounce back some of that energy, which is going to be interesting for those on the other end who are throwing it, because it will bounce it back with probably, what? Minimum 12% spin increase. Yeah, okay, 12 times at least. The strength that was thrown. Some of it will get through, but not enough to rip the rods and make them spin, and not enough to fulfill the 55 activation. Now, that protection can hold only as long as the gates are open. Because of what the galactic gates are doing in this, what is called a starfire ascension cycle, the whole thing is called starfire ascension, and that's the Christ star evolutionary process. Um, those gates have to close in 200 years, which means those big um, energy arms that are coming down from that matrix that are right now are holding Earth's core open so these gates can still work are going to be pulled back. When that happens, all of this is going to let loose. That Merkab is going to, the, the Death Star will activate. But there's going to be something that happens not too long after that. That's going to happen in 2230 A.D., in uh, 2976, there's going to be things that the others have caused to occur in the core that actually the Earth is going to choose the, the path of uh, Kali Ramus step back and it's going to explode. And that will release. It's kind of like being cremated as opposed to being buried, <laughs> right? You can be buried in a, in a black hole and be used and used and used while your body is still around. But if you want your spirit free, you can either do the ascension or do the step back. And the Earth is choosing the step back. So there's going to be periods after this host leaves that I'm wondering personally how many are even going to be left by that time on this planet because there's still the issue of the sun and it is still going to start throwing larger gamma bursts and there's going to be a point where that does become a problem and a good case scenario when it starts to do that I mean at first you'll start having the satellites are acting wacky then you'll start having stranger things happening um, there will be a period, I think, and I'm not sure what time frame, they haven't solidified this yet, probably because it's still in flux. It depends on some of the things that the people on this planet choose to do, what the Illuminati choose to do, basically. Because certain things will slow things down as far as Earth changes and solar issues, and certain things will speed them up. Um, so that's why, you know, that, yeah, okay, I'm asking them if, if that's why they're not giving exact time frames. But there will come a time, I do believe, where there's going to be some very strange electromagnetic storms that become the norm here. Um, life as we know it now is going to change. The civilization as we know it now is going to change. It's just a matter of when within that 200-year period. One of the things that will accelerate it has to do with something that we're going to be learning about in this workshop that I just know a little bit about and I'll know more by Monday like everybody else that has to do with what the... Um, those who make wings and things are up to the aquarium. There is a certain thing they're trying to achieve. They would like to take over this program and make that theirs and make it fall in their direction. Um, they're not going to achieve that, so they do have a plan B that involves providing a, a weapon technology to the humans, the Illuminati that they're working with here. They're tricking them, actually. That has to do with some kind of electromagnetic scalar pulse um, an in, uh, infrasound type pulse that they're supposedly giving it to one group. They didn't say which groups they're going to give it to. They give it to one group so they can throw it at their enemies and wipe out a big portion of their enemy's population. Except it rip ricochets back and it's going to do both. And the cordium are going to go, <laughs> get rid of the bunch of you. Right? That kind of thing. There's going to probably be an escalation toward war progressively. If you look at the soul groups on this planet, the people who live on this planet, the people who are controlling countries on this planet, Everybody hates each other. You know, 
the Palestinians and the Jewish people, the Muslims and the Christians. I mean, get over it, people. They're not going to get over it. That's the problem. These are soul groups. It's not just about the little people on the ground. Those people are connected to things they don't even remember exist. Those soul groups are having wars with each other. They are trying to wipe each other off the planet because whoever gets left with it might be able to have the resources enough to get off it in spaceships when the time comes, if they're planning on being the ones left. And the, the Christ's purpose in this is to just hold ground and keep the gates open for the 200-year period and help as many people who want to learn how to get as far as they can with their biological evolution. If they can't fully go into a transfiguration, that's fine. You can learn how to bardo properly so you don't get stuck in your body once it does die, and you can get out into the proper gate sets and not get caught in the wormholes. That's our job, is to keep that potential alive on the planet. What the others do around us make it really, really ugly at a certain point. The ugly could happen as early as 2019 to 2022, because that's around the time that there's a strong possibility. It's not phase locked in yet. It depends on who chooses what, and now it's Illuminati choosing. Good luck with that. Um, what they choose to do with the Cortium's offer on a certain weapon, but there's also something the Guardians are doing to make it more appealing to not bother, and that has to do with the activations of the, uh, the ancient arrow sites. Because if they're activated on the crystal spiral, the weapon that the Cordium are using won't work. Okay. Welcome to our weekend. That's actually along the lines of the positive side of the Wingmaker's material. Yes. Okay? Yes, because those sites belonged to the Guardians originally. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, because there is a distinction, the Cordium <coughs> is not the Wingmaker's. Okay. The Wingmaker's are actually the positive beams that would be similar to what you're calling the, uh, the Guardians, in essence as they're described in the, in the wingmaker material. Yeah, <laughs> okay. right. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you what it what they, I'm sure they think they're about. very nice. Okay, but they're not the Cordium. This is a different group. Okay, um, they're actually part of the same group. No, not, not according to the wingmakers. According to the Guardians, the they are. The bad guys in the wingmakers. Uh-huh. Okay. I mean, you have to, you know, I, I understand I'm, that you have to. They're still saying that the, the Cordium makers. are the wingmakers. They made up the story. Okay, okay. I mean, right. this and this is isn't the people on the ground. This isn't the people who discovered no, the sites. I'm just telling you what the information tells you. Right. The information tells you they're two different groups. Yeah. Um, that the Wingmakers were the original guys that came, that were, came from Source, and the Cordium are the ones that have what's called blank slate technology. Yes, the That's beast. That's what they call it. <laughs> yeah, the beast. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is the blank slate technology, yes. by the way. And it's not just theirs. Everybody's fighting over it that has it but they are actually the same race group, okay. is what the Guardians are saying. Because I, I didn't know anything about the Wingmakers. And they start, you know, they put this thing in voice, and go, who are the Wingmakers? And they say, go look it up. <laughs> and they just say, what? Oh, <laughs> whatever. And it never came up again. But now it is, because we're getting to 2011 when they're going to try their thing. But their thing isn't going to work. Right. Because we're going to activate. See, the, the Cordium and their Wingmaker friends, relatives, actually know that there are more than seven sites. There are seven they managed to conquer. So they're the seven everybody's, they're trying to look for and they're trying to activate. The Guardians know because they were the Guardian sites to begin with and they are somehow connected to those spanner gates, but I'm not sure how yet. We'll find out more over the weekend. Um, they know that there are 12 primary and 24 secondary. Now, if there's only seven compromised, if you activate those others, they'll quantum override to compromise and fix the broken arrows. And that's exactly what they're planning to do. And by the time this gets aired, it'll be done. Okay. By Monday, it'll be done. And I, I remember when they came to me and said, we're talking about wing makers? I said, I don't know anything about wing makers. And I said, we do. <laughs> it's like, okay. But the people have been tricked by these groups. It, it's something that, that you had mentioned, where you play one side off the middle, where you, know, you pretend that you're being victimized, but it's actually you're playing both sides. That is what they're doing. The Cordium and the Wingmakers are the same group. They are the same soul group. They are the same race group. And they may have differences in their issues, and they have different... I think they evolved in different lines, and they're warring with each other. Because right now, this is about a war from the Toral Rift. They said they're coming from, what was it? 2770 AD, that's where they're coming in from. 
right? That's after this place has gone into Toral Rift alignment. So there are wars taking place between them, one blaming the other, et cetera, et cetera. But they're the same race group that's fighting with each other. And they both want to take the quantum of this. They, they want to take over this mission. It's kind of foolish because they're taking on a bunch of big guys that you have to be really, really arrogant if you're a fallen angelic group to really even attempt to the, the ones who are controlling this now, like the Borgia are one of the, the strongest and nastiest um, fallen groups that there are, and they're huge. They're, they have a huge portion of the, uh, the parallel Vecca system that went down and parallel Akasha, so, like, in, in the parallel Akasha. Um, they, like, good luck to them with that, but they're not going to achieve it, because if it were allowed to go through, first of all, they would activate those sites. They wouldn't need to play games with giving weapons technology. They would just use it. And they would be the ones that were pushing the buttons for this extinction to occur. The whole thing is a trickery. Now, some of the things that in the sites were from our guys, right, at various times. But some of them were from theirs. That's why the art, it's very dangerous. Some of it's wonderful and beautiful. Others of it is coded mathematically like that to trigger the Metatronic stuff in your DNA. So you have to be really careful. There's ways to watch stuff with a screen, right? Where you just put the screen, yeah, and there's ways like if, if we're the same way you do photography, if somebody takes your picture, you put the screen up. So it's really funny, if you ever try to mess with somebody through a photograph, or even just find out who they are and do a psychic read, if they're good at screening, they'll come right up in your face and go, excuse me, you didn't ask, right? So there's these games that, that we play. Like whenever I do anything on video, there's the, the screen is, is there. You can do that when you're looking at the art. Or the music is, is more dangerous because if you get the other stuff, the sound tones work even more quickly than the optical pineal induction does as far as triggering the DNA. Yeah, so we, I, I just avoid it, the whole Wingmakers thing, even though some of the art's very pretty. It's like, whatever. <laughs> so anyway, but uh, whatever their story is, I, their I'm not here to tell their story. I'm here to tell the sure. story that the Guardians are explaining to me about them. Because there's a lot of beings out there that are actually have done some really horrible things and then blame it on that one and pretend they're the good guys. This is like, you know, the old sleight of hand that has been going on is part of the reason why it got this bad in Atlantis and worse because of the trickery that was going on. So we just kind of, I kind of feel like a cosmic news reporter sometimes. And it's like, you don't know, people don't always want to hear the news. And I trust my sources. And I will just let people know what my sources have said. And they can do what they want with that. You know, they don't have to agree and that's okay but that's what I understand about the Wingmakers and I will believe what the Guardians tell me because they have showed amazing things in the knowledge that they have provided I've never seen anybody's anything stand up to to this paradigm that they've showed and there's a reason because it's the real thing you know I mean I, I just I look at it and go, oh my god you know and then I kind of go how did I survive doing all those graphs <laughs> right and I wonder sometimes because I just like focus on the moment and have to get done whatever it is for this thing and this thing. But this is the first time we've actually got to like just kind of go and look back and say, wow, look at all of this information. You know, it's, that's one of the things that helps to keep me going w with it because it wasn't fun having to, you know, be Metatron's whistleblower. That's not the role I wanted to play. But when they showed the mechanics and showed how people were being hurt and how they were hurting the planet and they were being tricked, what was I going to do? Say, oh, I'm too scared to go and talk about it. The New Age people aren't going to like me. Too bad. I'm not here to be liked. I'm here to tell the truth. And uh, that's kind of where it's at. But there's a lot of hopeful things to look for. We're, we're in a calm before the storm right now. And one of the most important things is to move through the 2012 period where we do have enough quantum of energy of anchoring that crystal spiral. There shouldn't be a problem with it, even if there's only three of us left standing on a beach somewhere doing it. But the more people involved with that, the better that would be for them as well as for us. Now, this, these activations of the crystal spiral will happen even if there is only one guardian left on the planet to anchor it. it. The more people there are, the stronger it'll be. But the people who actually do anchor it before that 55 hits will have a protection field that people who do these technologies after, they'll still get some protection field from it. But if you can get the DNA protection before that 55 hits. It will be much easier and you will have much less problem with the 55 activations than if you discovered this in 2013. You can still use it in 2013, but you will still be working with a DNA code that has been dragged into a 55 and holding. 
and that means right there, biological ascension is out of the question completely. All right, that's where you work on Bardo. Okay, if you, the next thing you can do to evolve, you know, to your next highest level would be to work on a proper Bardo when the time comes, which means keep your body as alive as long as possible, bring as much as Christian frequency in as you can, and when it reaches its natural death point, which usually comes when the seed atom is about to burn out, right? Because it, it just lo it doesn't have enough quantum coming in from the amount of inflow, and it gets tired, and that's what actually causes natural death. Natural, <laughs> when death isn't natural, but on a Metatronic code, that's what causes it. So, you know, people are welcome to join us with this. At, we're going to be doing something um, that night <laughs> of the solstice. I'm not sure what it is yet. I think we're booked here, though, aren't we? No? We're booked somewhere. Yeah. yeah but we don't know what we're doing yet, but we just know we have to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, well, we, <laughs> for a long time, the guardians have told me, like when I'm walking into a lecture, don't know what I'm speaking about yet. And they're like, you know, in the elevator going up and the room is right there as soon as the door opens, and I have a napkin and a pen. And they're going, here you go. <laughs> they're going, just show up and take it from there. We'll be there with you. And that is how I've survived the last 10 years of this wacky way of bringing amazing information to the planet. It's not been easy on this, this side, but uh, I, I am in love with this material. There's nothing. There's no church out there. There is no science out there that can touch the unified church and science put together, religion and science, spirit and science put together that is in here. And that's why we do what we do, and we love this planet too. And um, so it's kind of a rat. Any other question areas you want to go into? Okay, that's... That's lovely, and I think that's a wonderful um, sort of place to end, or at least close this for now. But I, I do have a few questions, uh, just in general, and we could probably skip over them pretty quickly. Okay. Um, so I, I think that some people are going to be wondering uh, what, whether or not some of the most recent occurrences, like um, what happened in Haiti, and, it's on the uh, workshop itinerary to talk about that. Uh, so if you could talk about that a little bit in terms of, because we, there's, there's also a grid line in which goes through these points and so joins them up. So I'm wondering if that was targeted by heart and what your knowledge is and what you've been given on that regard. Um, because that is already listed on the workshop itinerary, that's something we're going to be talking about, mm -hmm. I would be glad to answer that later, but we will have more information. I have information on it, okay. but out of respect for the people coming to the workshop, we'll release it there first on I that. See. But yes, it is connected. Yes, there's a specific thing that triggered the, the Haiti earthquake okay. that was done on purpose. It wasn't done to cause an earthquake, but they knew that that would be the result of it, and they didn't care, as usual. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's connected to something. Let's just put it this way. It's connected to something called the Gravitron that's in the Gulf of Mexico, and it's connected to something called the Alpha Omega Temples, and the uh, Spear of Destiny grids, which happen to be draconian grids, all right, the Omicron draconian. So it has to do with certain activations taking place there, and that is why that was caused. And the Chile one is also connected, but that was actually a counteraction. That has to do with the wing makers, not the cordium. <laughs> the wing makers helped that one along. Yeah. The earthquakes aren't being done on purpose, but they are. The, the result of that probably happening is known when the certain grid mechanics are being done and they're doing them anyway. Yeah, and there, there will be more instances like that. Okay. Uh, also, um, in terms of, you know, there are a lot of people, um, including the, uh, the governments, uh, secret governments of countries, building huge underground bases at this time. And what is your take on what's going to happen in regard to those bases and so on? I think they're expecting the solar flares to come sooner rather than later. Okay. And there is a very distinct possibility that we will all see an end similar to the Knowing movie. Okay. Hopefully later rather than sooner. Meaning, because certainly you're not talking about within, you're talking after 2019, I'm assuming. Probably. Mm -hmm. See, these are some of the things that it depends on who does what here, and also who does what in relation to this mess 
you know, running through the solar grids and all of that, how fast or slow things will be. Okay. Because eventually there will be earth changes. First thing is to wake up in 2013 and have one of those kind of, what was it, Y2K mornings? Oh, that was boring. <laughs> Nothing happened, still here, right? That would be good. And that we'll probably succeed with. Then what? then we still have a bunch of countries that are being motivated to try to rip each other apart eventually. Then we're having a bunch of people still doing grid wars, and that's not going to change anytime soon. And we still have a sun that is progressively separating from its Russia body in Bardo ring waves, one a year. The 15th level one comes in 2022. There's also something that the Guardians have been doing, and we started this a while back when we found out you know, about the, about the solar issue, is there's something called the aqualine sun buffer field that, again, has to do with the planes that run through the Earth's atmosphere and also through the solar atmosphere, because the sun has a similar structure. All stellar bodies would have that similar structure of the four sets of 15 layers, right? And it, that means it would still have those places where the aurora continuum could come through. Right now, the reason we haven't seen any solar issues of a major sort happening is because of that buffer field. The Guardians put it up as soon as that seed closed, because usually it sends each one of those waves that come off when, when the, the dark matter body separates from the physical matter body, releases a gamma burst, and that will usually send a, an EMP out, you know, like a manic, manic pulse. Uh, what do they call those really big ones, those big pulses? There's a name for them. Hmm? No, the, the CMEs. Yes. Yeah. yeah, would usually do that. In those, there would be something called a red pulse, which is an underpulse that comes with it that actually shatters matter from the inside out. That would have started on a small level already if it weren't for the buffer field that was activated. They call it the aqualine sun because if you could see it, if you see it in, in the astro, it looks like a glowing aqua-colored sun. It's very pretty. But it's also been keeping the gamma bursts down and actually transmuting them before they come out. How long that will hold, it may hold the whole time. It, if not, there may be some moments where it comes out. If it's going to go into a knowing scenario, like the knowing movie, um, they will let us know, and there will be certain things that can be done and certain things that can't be done. You know, if it goes that, there's always the option of what they call pulling the shield, which means the Aquafarian shield, the people who are attached to the crystal spiral, they can get them up and out, you know, while it's still possible. And if their bodies can't, you know, they would simply bring them through the gates. And, you know, that's a really good way if you want to bardo really fast is to just go through a star stargate when your DNA can't handle it yet. Just inhale and hold. <laughs> so when you go, Psh, all of your little pieces of consciousness stay together and you don't go Pah, all over the universe. It shouldn't come to that. We will be warned if it will. But that is a possibility out there, but it's most likely a later one rather than a sooner one. The, the most pressing issues now are going to be what humans and Illuminati do on this planet. There's a slight possibility of invasion from the sky. It's not as strong as it has been in other periods because there's not a lot that would be gained by it right now from any of the sides. But that may change. We'll see where they go with that. And that's something that the Guardians are watching. They're also planning, the Guardians are planning their own visitation, but they're not going to use spaceships. What they're going to do is activate these particular zones that that can be opened between the uh, between those planes where there will be spaces where the higher earth planes and these earth planes actually commingle and they can come here and meet us halfway and we can go there and meet them halfway so they're going to start and then eventually once we get that far the next stage where we will be able to go over to that side the, the first the, the first level out of here which is going to higher earth all right which is the higher earth planes and they will look physical once you get your consciousness one dimension above where their matter is, it is physical, it is solid. So that's what we're working on now, you know, the next phase. And so that's what it kind of look like, looks like right now. And it's just, I find myself, like how I deal with this, how I deal with the, the information that they've given me and okay, what, what are we looking at here? And it's like, well, it could go this way, it could go that way. We definitely know this part's happening, that's phase lock, but these things are still variables. And there's a lot of things that are like, it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. But when may be like closer to the end of the loadout 200-year cycle and that kind of thing. So it's just kind of like watch and wait and learn how to be at peace anyway and not let it wreck your day and not let it make you scared. And there's a space 
especially with working with some of the techniques that really do get you into a state of expansion where you feel that connection, that living connection to God's source, it wouldn't matter if I ever heard a guardian again. I feel the living connection with source. I know I am okay. Whether my body lives here or, or doesn't, that's okay. I am okay, and I am, I am home. And that is a space that I hope to be able to help other people to reach because it is the space you need to go through these times in where you can still smile and still make jokes and mean it and still, most importantly, love everybody. Because with the horrible things that have been you know, done to this planet and people do to each other and the, not just ETs, by the way. A lot of these people are not just ET, but they're ID, interdimensionals. You know, not all of them use spaceships. Some of them use those uh, nasty Merkaba fields, right, as their transit vehicles. But to be able to keep the love there anyway is part of the lesson, I think, that consciousness comes into situations like this to move through. It's almost like a test of your marriage on do you really love? Do you really know what that means? Can you still love them even though they did that? Can you still not be afraid even though you know this is occurring? And it tests you because we're dealing with these little emotional bodies down here that go, ah! <laughs> I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. But I'm going to be tough anyway. I believe in the Christ. And the one nice thing is there really are, there, there is only one set of rules that do, does apply in the eternal cosmos. And they are the rules of the Christ. The only people that haven't learned that yet are the ones that still play the, the FA games, the fallen angelic games. Because all they will eventually do is meet the consequence of their action. And the people who don't allow themselves to be lowered to that level of action and keep their truth and keep their love and all of those things, they will also be met with the consequence of that. It's about not letting yourself be worn down by those who act in unkind or evil even ways around you. Evil eventually destroys itself. This too shall pass. But the eternal is just that, eternal. It's a no-brainer as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> anyway. Okay, thank you very much, Ashiana Dean. Thank you. And um, I'm just going to ask one more question, and we'll see, because that was a lovely ending. Um, but I do want to ask you, just in case, uh, there are a lot of people out there who think that they're going to be rescued by spaceships, by positive beings in spaceships, in and around 2012, after 2012, and so on. Can you please address that? Let's put it this way. There's none of those lined up in the port and any of the guardian sites. It is a possibility, if things are going to go bad, that some of the uh, other ones from the other from the fallen matrices will come and get what they consider their own seed in order to transport it elsewhere in the fall systems. It's a possibility. But even if you're in that position, I wouldn't hold my breath. These beings were planning to move those rods and have it all over while they were telling people that, oh, 2012 is going to be your ascension. It was going to be your annihilation. You know, if they did come in, I'd really think twice before I got on that ship. So that's our opinion on it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your patience with this, for letting the guardians speak about what they felt was important. Thank you very much. They were given an agenda that they thought without any doubt was rolling out, and it simply isn't. And <laughs> Those people weren't lying to us. I mean, they were convinced and they believed it, and they were leading their lives accordingly. And they still are. A lot of them are still with that agenda. You know, they're building their underground bases. They're doing, going through all the motions. They, they fully expect, you know. And we have one witness who, he keeps tell, being told every, you know, year or six months or something, this is it, you know. And I mean, so it's sad for them in a way, because even if they were well-meaning initially, mm -hmm. They're telling us what was supposed to happen with conviction. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen, and then they, they it's like the kind of calling, you know, wolf too many times. Yeah, they exactly. keep saying, okay, now it's happening. Okay, that now it's part happening. of the plan, actually, yes. to 
just have so many people cry wolf for the last 200 years and nobody listens anymore when the end times do come. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's where we're, this is a, that's where this interview comes in and is fascinating because one of the things that I'm, I've noticed is, you know, you have a churning, very difficult to get new material into that mix. And, and, you know, I'm sure that that's part of the program, which has to do with, you know, the earth being surrounded by the, those uh, levels. But you're, in my view, you were bringing new material. This is new material. This is fresh. Um, and it just doesn't seem to be seeded out there in other places, you know. And, and so, um, and I, I find that stunning, actually, you know. I mean, you don't expect to find one place and one piece of you know information group of information that would only exist one place on the earth usually there's a duplication somewhere mm -hmm. you know but i i'm not seeing it so Maybe you know we'd be thrilled to find enough yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> so i mean it's just like <laughs> and it's the same with science right. it's, it's, it's just short. like earthly science is so caught in this web of oh, it's just re repetition and yeah and you know and even the free energy group is having a problem you know i mean getting new information and new material into this planet seems to be a real problem it's not mm -hmm. and so that's part it, of what it actually you know. causes physical pain to do it to, to bring that fresh line in yeah because the body is still holding yeah, and the, the, the um, dimensional body structures are still holding the mutation of the planetary grids. So that information has to force itself through. And yeah, everything from extreme bone pain and joint pain, yeah. to sometimes when it comes in, if a really heavy, fast line comes in, instant nausea, and just heat flash. Except it's, what's really funny is that the men get the heat flashes too. So it's not, it's not just <laughs> female applause. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So it is there. Yeah. In the beginning time, it was hilarious. Just like, well, I'm glad I have front teeth because the back ones just kept shattering. Yeah. Just from the amount of frequency coming. Yeah. 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 Front cells. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. I mean, I've had that very much anymore. Happen also. I mean, I think that there is a, you know, there are also places on the planet where this is more likely to happen than other places. Um, Egypt is one of them. Um, Some of the worst groups. <laughs> yeah, uh, but very powerful. I mean, certain places are very powerful and can really, I mean, I've been hit just incredibly where I've just fallen and I've fallen on the ground and stuff, type of thing. Um, so it, yeah, it can be very intense. We have one of those in England when I first went over before we were married when we went over for the first time to the workshops over there. I think it was the second one. Yeah. And I got hit so bad just while I was on stage. Yeah, and literally, I, yeah, I was like shaking. I had to be a call break. And we were told by the guardians to go home now, cancel the other five, just get, go. Yeah. Right, and get on stage for instance. And that was when we wrote the Treaty of Altair in 2000. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and all of a sudden, the grids weren't safe over there anymore where they had us. So it's a really nasty game. But yeah, I a sense of humor. Yeah, yeah I, I actually think that's really important too. I, I think some people don't appreciate that. that but you really get grouchy about it, you know? No, no. And I, you know, I noticed that right away when I was watching your videos. I was like, oh my God, thank God this woman has, you know, a sense of humor. Because your sense of humor was obvious, you know, on stage. It was, you know, that you had sort of a lighthearted ability to laugh at yourself and what was going on. I yeah. refuse to let self to take that away from me. You know, that's something that's really important because if you let if you let it get to you, it won. Mm -hmm. Right? Seriously. So, you know, I go through my you know, bitchy moves. <laughs> get grumpy and grumpy and get delicate. And hypersensitive to sound and delight and the whole bit. It's like, oh, turn the TV off to make them go. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, moments, yeah, no, I mean. The frequency is really running high. But to. To let it like move me into depression or anger, it's like okay, I can let a little wave of anger. Darn it, I wish I just stop doing that stuff, you know. But they're not gonna stop doing it. Get over it, <laughs> right? It's not a good day anyway. Yeah, and it, that's true. If I can hold that in myself, I can transmit it, and mm -hmm. you know, just in my delivery and just in meeting people at all, and maybe that would give them enough frequency boost so they can do that too. Yeah, because yeah. if not, it's, it, it just gets... Do you categorize the right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 
experience that space. It, it's easier said than done, but it's important to remember that we should be capable of influencing perspective, if not context. And we can always choose to adjust our perspective. Exactly. If we're worn That's out, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. But there are moments when you can do that. And you can still come up and see it really the way it is. And be wry, at the very least, wry in your humor. Yeah. You know, um, we each have our own way of being that way. I don't think there's a common way of being. But I, I would, there is a common desire or a common need to recognize the importance of that. Always. Yeah, I mean, hence the arts and drama and all of it, you know, this just can be great release valves for what's going on and, yeah. and keeping people in a balanced state mm -hmm. in the face of some pretty heavy duty odds. Absolutely. Yeah.